Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Elizabeth and I run the blog lifefromtheviolasection.com where I share my favorite practice tips, general advice, and tech for musicians. Today I'm going to be sharing the Roadmap to Music School, which was originally an Instagram post I made over on at Life from the Viola section. And these are kind of the steps that you'll go through when you're applying to and auditioning for music school. So if you have no idea where to start or just kind of the order that everything comes in, this video is going to be really great for you. If you find this video helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel. I post new videos every Sunday at noon. And for high school musicians, I have a summer program called College Application and Audition Academy, which is a three week long program live over Zoom twice a week, where I'm sharing my best tips and tricks on how to get into music school and feel prepared and confident for your auditions. It's going to be really, really great and it starts on July 12th. I'd love to see you there. You can go to my website, elizabethknob.com to see all of the details about the Academy and sign up there. Of course, if you have any questions about it, feel free to leave a comment down below or DM me over on Instagram. I would love to chat with you about whether or not this might be right for you. If you're a high school musician interested in going to college for music, you might have noticed that the process is a little tougher for us. Unlike other majors like English or history or STEM areas, we have a few more hoops to jump through like auditions, sometimes pre-screenings, theory tests, and other kind of requirements that we have to go through to get accepted. So this can be tough to navigate and I want to help you understand what those steps are and kind of the timeline for everything. If you'd like to see this laid out visually, I do have a PDF called The Roadmap to Music School. You can download it on my website and there will be a link in the description box for you to download that PDF. It's going to be really, really helpful for you. It's a great guide. So the first step is to research schools. This might be kind of obvious, but you wanna look at as many schools as you can to see what you do and do not like about different schools. How big of a school do you want to go to? What kind of location do you want to be in? Do you want to go somewhere really close by or do you want to go further away from home? These are all topics to consider and things to really think about. So it's usually easiest to start with a Google search for what you're interested in. So maybe you're interested in flute performance. So you can type in college flute performance, see what comes up. Those top few schools on the search results might not be what you're looking for. They might not be the location you want or they might not have what you want, but it's good to check out their websites to see what they require, what their program is like, different things, different aspects, how big their school is, where they are, all of these different things. This is all information that you can collect and see, okay, I want that or I don't want that. And then you can kind of pick and choose and see what schools have those things that you do want and they don't have those things that you don't want. So I started researching and touring schools in my sophomore year of high school. I would recommend doing that if you are a freshman or a sophomore right now. Um, I, felt, I felt like that was a really good time to get started because it gave me time to look at schools, think that I like them, and then decide that I didn't like them, and then find new schools, and then go through the process again and again. So I had time for that kind of trial and error period. You can of course start this as late as you need to. but. If you are a freshman right now, I would definitely recommend starting that your sophomore year. The second step is to research teachers. So if you're going to school for music, you are likely going to have to take hour long weekly private lessons with your teacher. So if you're a violist with your viola teacher or a flutist with a flute teacher, or if you're a singer, then the teacher of your voice part. So hour long lessons for three or four years or more is a lot of one-on-one -on -one time and you want to be sure that you have a good relationship with your teacher because they are really going to shape your college experience. So it's great to research teachers on their own. If you find a school that you like, look into who the teacher is of the instrument or voice part that you play. Some teachers teach at multiple schools, some teachers teach at one school. So if you find a teacher that teaches at multiple schools, there may be one school that suits you better and one school that doesn't suit you as well. So that kind of gives you a choice if you really like a certain teacher. One way to see if a teacher might be a good fit for you is to look at their work history. Have they played in really big orchestras? Have they had a really prominent chamber music career? Have they played, have they performed in operas or musical theater? Um, are they a jazz musician or are they very classical? See if what they've done aligns with what you want to do because it will be really helpful if they have experience in exactly what you want to do because then they'll be able to be a better mentor for you. It really helped me to go over to YouTube and type in teachers' names to see if they have any performances online or any master classes. It's great to watch master classes with teachers so that you can see their teaching style and kind of what their influences are and 
just the things that they bring out in students. That can be really eye-opening, and it's always good to listen to a performance of a prospective teacher um, to see if you even like their playing style, because some teachers, when you're an undergrad, will kind of try to mold you into the same kind of player as them, and good teachers won't really do that, but some teachers do, and sometimes it's a subconscious trap that they fall into. So you want to be sure that you like the way that they play, because it's likely that they will try to teach you to play in a similar way to them. If you're really interested in a teacher, it's super, super helpful to get a trial lesson with them. Some trial lessons are paid and some are free. It's good to ask beforehand so that you know what you're getting yourself into and so that you know if you can afford it. Um, but you can either contact admissions of the school or you can contact them directly by email if they have an email address on the school website um, to set up a trial lesson. Some teachers are like so happy to do it and others don't really want to do it. So, you know, there are different opinions and feelings out there. So just be respectful of everyone you communicate with. The third step on this roadmap is to apply to schools. So you will likely apply to schools the fall of your senior year or the year before you plan on going off to college. So the most common deadline for college applications is January 1st. For music majors, you sometimes need to turn it in around November, around when early admissions applications are due, just so that they have your application and then you can schedule your audition for sometime in the winter months. A lot of schools use a website called the Common App and this is one website where you put in all of your information, like your name, your address, your high school information, your test scores, all of that, and then it's sent off to every college, and then you have to like upload your essays for each individual school, and you press a button and it goes off to every school. Other schools will have their own um, application on their specific website, so you have to input all that basic information over and over again. Um, it's not that big of a deal, but it's really convenient when all the schools you apply to are on the Common App website, but like that shouldn't be a deal breaker for you. <laughs> it's just good to know how this is going to work out before you get there. It can be really helpful to start school applications before you're ready to turn them in. Definitely start ahead of time so you know exactly what the essay prompts are going to be and you have time to think about those and write them really well. It also never hurts to start an application, even if you're not sure you're actually going to end up applying, because then if you do decide last minute that you're going to apply there, then you've got almost everything filled out and you just have to kind of plug in a few last minute things rather than starting from scratch at the last minute when you're counting down to midnight when the application is due. The fourth step is to actually audition at schools. So this past year, most college auditions were online, either live over Zoom or you would send it in a pre-recorded video. I don't have any insider information, I don't know how they're going to go this winter, but I anticipate more of them at least will be in person live. So auditions are usually held between December and February, and there are kind of two different types of scheduling that I found. Either there is one date for your specific instrument, and that's the date you have to audition on, or there are specific audition dates and you just get to choose whichever one works for you. For most of my auditions, both undergrad and grad school, it was the latter that I just said, um, where they have different dates that you can choose from and you just choose whichever is convenient. But at, I think, one school I auditioned at for grad school, it was one day for violists only. It really helps to keep a spreadsheet of when all of these potential dates are so that you can figure out when you need to travel and um, if there are multiple auditions in one city that you need to travel to, if you can um, maneuver the auditions in one weekend, it, you know, it's a lot of moving parts, but keeping it as organized as you can will make it a little easier. Some college auditions will be held on the weekends. I remember at the school I ended up going to, my audition was on a Saturday, but for two of the other schools that I auditioned at for undergrad, they were on weekdays and I got to miss school, which was fun. Um, but I think most schools have weekday auditions and weekend auditions, so you can either miss school or if you need to travel, do it over the weekend. So auditioning at schools is probably what you're going to be most nervous for, and there are so many videos out on the internet and resources that you can look into all about auditions and how to have a good mindset, but my biggest piece of advice is to practice in a way that is sustainable and healthy for you. You do not want to overwork yourself and stress yourself out even more than you need to be during your senior year of high school. So practicing in a way that is sustainable, as in like 
you can practice pretty regularly and not get burned out and not injure yourself and still be able to stay afloat and stay happy. Practicing in that way will help also prepare you for practicing in college because I probably put more hours in the practice room in undergrad more than I ever had in like my entire life before that. So, so finding a good, sustainable, healthy practice routine in high school will really, really help set yourself up for success for really the rest of your life if you choose to continue being a playing musician. Also remember that absolutely no one is going to have a perfect audition. You will probably mess up a few notes or a few rhythms, just a few different things, and that's okay. Teachers at college auditions are looking for students that they can teach and make better. They are not looking for finished products like in a professional orchestra audition. They're looking for someone who's gonna perform the same exact way every single time and always nail it. At a college audition, teachers are looking for someone who they can really mold into that really good musician. So yeah, you wanna be as prepared as you can, but just know that they're not looking for a finished product professional musician yet. So after the auditions, <laughs> A lot of us feel a little more nervous after auditions than we do before because we just want to find out what happened. So you'll likely get your decision letters throughout March. Um, different schools have different timelines and it can be really weird and crazy, but March is usually around when you'll find out. And then after that, if you're accepted, then you'll start getting the financial aid information and you can start putting the pieces together of, okay, this school is gonna cost this much, this one would cost this much, and like, what are the pros and cons? And you can start weighing your decision and all of that. So hopefully you will only receive acceptance letters, but if you do get rejected to one school or all schools, just know that rejection is part of the life of being a musician. Sadly, we all have to deal with it and we all have to find ways to move past the rejection. And a lot of the times, if you aren't accepted to a school, there was some other kind of moving part within that decision. Like they might not have had room in their studio or they might not have had enough money to offer you anything. Or, you know, there could have been any number of reasons behind the scenes why you were not accepted and it might not have had anything to do with how you played. It might have, there might have been so many variables involved. It's okay, keep practicing and keep going and move forward. So after you receive your acceptance letters and financial aid information, you can start really making your decision. So a lot of people are going to have opinions about where you should or shouldn't go. And yeah, you might wanna to listen to those people and they probably have your best interests at heart, but know that what you want and what you want to get out of school is the most important aspect. Also, the financial aspect is really important and not a lot of people talk about that when you're in high school. So weighing what you want along with how many student loans you're gonna have to take out, those are two really, really big, probably the most important deciding factors in your decision. So if you found this video helpful and you are a high school age musician or a parent of a high school musician, you are going to love my summer course, College Application and Audition Academy. Like I said earlier, this program is live on Zoom for three weeks, two sessions a week, and we will be talking all about all of these different aspects along with an information session for parents where we talk about financial aid and how to be a good support system for your music student. We will go so much deeper in depth than I did in this video, talking all about really how to find your ideal teacher, what the day-to-day -day life in music school is really like, and how you might be able to choose which major would be best for you if you're trying to decide between like performance, education, technology, business. If you don't know which exact one you wanna do, we can talk about how to find what might be the best suit for you and what you want to do someday. This is going to be such an incredibly helpful program for high school musicians, so I would love to see you there. Again, you can check out all the information on my website, you can send me a DM if you have any questions, and I will see you there on July 12th. Thanks for watching! Mm -hmm.